the odds are moving for Paolo Bancaro. I, 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 I don't really understand why, but we hear from Jeff Weltman and his approach to the NBA draft. It's time for a Tuesday edition of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is June 21st, 2022. My name is Philip Rossmark. I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the latest with the first overall pick, some odd movement, um, at least by one sportsbook, not by the sportsbook, even by the sportsbook that we use uh, at Bet Online. Um, why? What's going on there? Why it? Probably doesn't mean anything. Plus, we hear from Jeff Wilman. I will play his full media avail- availability from Monday in full. Provide my thoughts at the end of it as well as the Magic gets set for the NBA draft this Thursday. Before we do any of that, though, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. No matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, whether it's in the middle of your day, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. We know this is a big week. We're doing our best to give you some great podcasts. I do apologize for any audio issues we had yesterday. Hope the main point got across. I'll I'll reiterate some of it here in just a moment. Remember, there's also great Locked On podcasts covering all the teams around the league. So if you want the latest on the NBA draft, the Locked On podcast is where you should go. Just search for Locked On in the team you're looking for. The Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. Before we dive into Jeff Weltman uh, and what he had to say, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about... Um, Kind of the news that's been going around. I don't know if it's news, but it's a thing. It, people are talking about it. I feel like it's worth explaining. I feel like it's worth repeating what I said yesterday um, regarding Paolo Bancaro. Uh, first off, uh, you will hear from Jeff Weltman. He did not confirm whether the Magic did or did not work out Paolo Bancaro. I have seen conflicting reports saying the Magic went to see him up in New York um, to watch him work out. Um, I know for you know, I know from my own reporting that. Um, Bancaro, uh, at least to my knowledge, has not been to Orlando. He was at one point scheduled to come to Orlando, but that may or may not have happened. It's not particularly clear at this point. Um, I, I I went on record yesterday, pretty you know, pretty lukewarm on Paolo Bancaro. Um, I have been on the Paolo train. I think he's a really gifted scorer. I think he's a really gifted player. Uh, but when I look at what the Magic are trying to build, the philosophies that they've tried to build, I don't see him fitting what this Magic team wants to be. Um, and again, that's not a, that's not necessarily a knock on Paolo Bancaro, but I look at the things that this Magic team, this Magic front office values. Defensive versatility, um, being able to move the ball. Those the, the kind of offense, the kind of defense they want to build. Paolo Bancaro, despite his scoring ability, and yes, at some point the Magic do just need to get a guy who can get a freaking bucket. Um, I'm, I don't think Paolo Bancaro is the guy they want to hitch their wagon to. And, and especially as you look ahead to what this league's trying to become and what, where this league is going. Um, I, I think both Jabari Smith and Chet Holmgren are better options. I've moved Paolo Bancaro to third on my board. Um, I think he will ultimately go with the third pick in this draft of the Houston Rockets. But something strange happened Monday, and I don't think it was in response to Jeff Weltman. It certainly wasn't in response to what I said uh, on this show yesterday. Um, but Paolo Bancaro... His odds, according to Bet Online, according to a lot of the major sports books, dramatically dropped. Um, you know, dramatically changed. Um, he went from I think it was what plus sixteen hundred or plus eight hundred down to about plus two seventy five was the last I saw um, to be the number one pick in the draft. For those who don't know what those gambling terms mean, es- essentially, um, if you're plus sixteen hundred. That means if you bet 100, you get 1,600. That's that's what that means. So if you're plus 275, that means if you bet 100 dollars, you get to you get 275 dollars. Um, Jabari Smith has been the betting favorite to be the number one pick. I would still say that is probably the case. Um, he is he's been I've seen him at like minus 165, minus 190. But really for the last week, it's essentially been a dead heat between 
Chet Holmgren and Jabari Smith. And now Paolo Bancaro, at least by the odds, um, has drawn pretty much even with Chet Holmgren to be the number one pick. What's sparking this? Um, that is a fair question. Does someone know something that everyone else doesn't? Potentially. Um, I've seen some rumors. I've seen some reporting that the Houston Rockets are starting to get a little bit scared that Oklahoma City is going to take Paolo Bancaro, which is the guy they apparently really want. Um, and so they may be engaging with Orlando to move back up into the first pick. As I explained on yesterday's show too, I don't think the conditions are present for the Magic to trade the number one pick. If I'm Orlando, unless I'm getting a King's Ransom, I'm talking multiple first-round picks, maybe a quality rotation player. I know Kenny Martin Jr. asked uh, asked for a trade out of Houston. I don't think that quite fits that bill. Um, but unless I am getting a killer offer, I'm not moving off the number one pick. I want the power. I want the decision. I want my guy. Again, like I say this all the time, in the draft, just go get your guy. I don't care who the Magic have number one on their board. I don't care if they disagree with me on that. They need to get their player. If it's Paolo, if it's Chet, if it's Jabari, it doesn't matter if they worked out here or not. It doesn't matter what hissy fit the agent might throw uh, for being the number one pick. Go get your guy. Go get the player the player and the person especially that you believe in. The way these gambling markets work, and I think it is really important, and someone noted this when I kind of commented on when I commented online about this. The way these gambling markets work is essentially they're trying to get action on both sides of the ledger. They want people betting on both sides. Um, so when Paolo Bancaro was plus whatever he was, 360, whatever it was, people were betting it heavily. And that's what drove, you know, bet online. That's what drove all those bookies to bring that number down, to try and get people to stop betting on it. Um, so clearly there's been a lot of money put on Paolo Bancaro to be the number one pick. Um, in the last 24 hours. And that's the only reason that number has gone down. Um, now, whether people are acting on information, I, I kind of think the number, when it was pointed out that this number was dropping dramatically, um, I, I, I pointed out that the, it, it sort of becomes a run on the bank. Um, you know, betters will take a look at a number that is decreasing and say, I need to get in before the odds aren't in my favor, before the odds aren't favorable to me. Uh, and so I think what happened was there's a little bit of group think here. There's a little bit of we all got to get in while the getting's good, uh, if, if that if, if that makes sense. Um, and the getting was good here. The getting was absolutely good here. Uh, and, and, and and you know if, again if you it's a it's a little bit of value bet. It's a little bit of a hedge your bet. If it, it's you know the Magic do end up picking Paolo Bancaro, and you have him with, with a ticket that says plus two eighty, you've you've done pretty well there. You know tw- uh, twenty you know. To 28 to 10, so that's what I don't know what the odds. I'm but like 14 to 5 odds. That's pretty good. You you you'll, you will you will take that. Um, I think that's what happened here, and I think that's why we saw the crazy movement that we did. Um, you'll hear from Jeff Waltman Jeff Waltman in a moment. Um, certainly, maybe adding some some flame to the fire. Maybe adding to that was the fact that Jeff Waltman said, you know, Magic haven't decided who they're going to pick yet. They're they are going to take it to the last day. Um, I think that's a little bit of smokescreen. There's going to be a lot of smokescreen. So if you do have to step out and cough while you're, listen, while you're listening to Jeff Weltman, that's perfectly understandable. There's a lot of smoke going on here. i um, trying to just, you know, kind of play every side, not commit to something publicly um, and keep, keep, open, keep options open and keep leverage open. There's a lot to get to. I don't want to waste too much time because I am going to play the full 20-minute uh, media availability in full here on the podcast. Um, so I do want to get to that. Um, sooner than later. We'll discuss a little bit some of the takeaways uh, from that coming up here in just a moment. But first, uh, let me tell you a little bit about what we're getting ready to do on draft night. Thursday night is NBA draft and one live NBA draft show is not enough for Locked On. So every show is going live on draft night. So I'm not going to be able to join 15 minutes after our pick. I will be doing an immediate. I will be doing. Uh, I, I'm going to try and join 15 minutes about 15 minutes after our pick. I, I do have a day job. I will be at my day job during the draft. But we will have a locked on Magic on YouTube in, uh, as soon as I can, right after the draft. Right after the Magic make their pick. Right after the draft ends. So subscribe to Locked On Magic now, so you know when I go live or when I do post uh, post my reaction to. The Magic draft pick. I will try and do my best to, to be there, but unfortunately, I do have a day job and uh, and I will be working that evening. Speaking of, we've talked a little bit about odds. NBA fans, if you're looking for a daily fantasy option for the NBA, MLB, or whatever. 
then you need to try the award-winning app Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. I love this game, and we know you will too. It's easy to play. You pick two to five players and an over-under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. And it's just you versus the projected numbers. No dealing with uh, with people who know what they're doing, multiple entries, none of that. It's just you and the numbers. Prize Picks offers a variety of options and any prop you can think of from points scored, rebounds, and even steals in the NBA, plus a whole lot more in other sports. Prize Picks offers uh, offers you know, potential play, potential picks in college basketball, college football, NFL, MLB, soccer, MMA, and more in addition to the NBA. Obviously, NBA out of season right now. For a limited time, Price Picks has an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all of our users. Users get $50 for free if a player in your first Price Picks entry scores a single point. But you have to use the promo code NBA. That's right. This is an exclusive offer available to Locked On fans. Sign up today. And use code NBA, $50 for free if a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point. When we come back, we will hear from Jeff Weltman as the Orlando Magic prepare for the NBA draft. Jeff's Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Uh, you know, looking at lottery night when you land the number one overall pick, uh, all the conversations, everything with the, with the draft starts through you guys. Just just how have you seen that, that play out? in your favor through this process? Um, well, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we're getting calls on the pick, and, and um, uh, all teams have to come through us if they have the ultimate desire to get to pick whoever they want. So um, believe it or not, we sit here on Monday before the draft. I, I tell you it's still early in the process. And, um, you know, um, dialogue is always ongoing. But, you know, most importantly, um, we get to do what we want, and that's that's the real uh, benefit of having the number one pick. So uh, it really hasn't altered the process a whole lot. You know, we, we do our work, and we uh, we try to be as careful as we can and as thorough as we can. But um, uh, uh, I don't think that having the number one pick has changed the way that we work. Go ahead, Kobe. Uh, Kobe Bryant, <laughs> Cincinnati. Jeff, you mentioned it. Having the more people get calls, dialogue screened, did you expect to use the number one pick or make that selection yourself? I'm always amazed that trades get made at all, as many things as, ha- as have to go into one to be successful. Um, so I always expect us to make the pick. Um, I expect us to make this pick. That said, obviously, um, you know, it's our job to explore uh, any avenue to get our team better. And, you know, we'll take. Uh, as much time as we can to do that. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, and you know, with having the number pick, you know, have you found that this process has confirmed maybe beliefs that you had before you start working out guys in terms of maybe guys that you like the most or guys that you have questions about? Did you feel like the, this process confirmed things or have you, I guess, learned things that you quite didn't know about certain guys? Uh, well, for sure it's confirmed that there are a lot of talented players at the top of this draft, that's for sure, which we we kind of felt this whole season. Um, Yeah, you get to learn more about guys as you have contact points with them and um, kind of push buttons and and spend time with them. Um, It's a big part of the process, but it's also, um, you know, um, just a multi-layered way of doing it. So yeah, when you bring guys in or whatever kind of touch points or even like as we apply our own internal layers of, you know, analytics and and everything else that we that we kind of bring to bear, um, you know, you find out who the guy is. That's the job, right? To try out, try to find out who the person is and who the player is. And the more time you get to concentrate on that, the better off you're going to be theoretically. And, and and obviously, we spend a lot of time refining like the process and, and and you know how even how our conversations internally go. So, if that answers the question, go ahead, Philip. Philip Rossman, right, or Orlando Magic Daily, um, at least in the way that the media and maybe some fans are talking about this draft, it's a two, maybe three person race for who should be the number one pick. Most drafts, typically, you kind of have a sense of who the number one guy is. Obviously, you, you still do the work and still do your, do your research and, and your process to, to, to suss that out. But how unique is this draft in that there are a lot of guys kind of in the running for that top pick and, and there's a, a real choice, choice there for you guys to make? 
Uh, I think that's as much for you to answer as for me. You know, I think that we've seen drafts before where people weren't sure who the number one pick is going to be, and we've seen some where it's kind of a foregone conclusion. So um, uh, I don't know how unique it is. I mean, uh, it, it is kind of what it is, and it kind of probably, I would say, for the fans, makes it fun. Go ahead, Tim. Tim Reynolds with the AP. Hi, Jeff. I'm, Where are you, Jeff? You're on, you're on, on your right. Oh, there you I always get that wrong, the whole looking at somebody. Thing. So, um, if we all promise not to ask you who, do you have an idea? If you had to do it right now, who it would be? Um, we did we did poll earlier. We're, we're not going to ask who, we promise. But uh, I'll, I'll say this. My, my dad used to tell me, if, if the paper is due on Friday, don't turn it in on Monday. So, um, you know, we're going to continue to evaluate. We're having meetings. Unfortunately, I had to have a lot of our uh, guys in yesterday and, and you know, uh, cut Father's Day short. Um, but we're continuing to evaluate and discuss and, and new information comes in, believe it or not, still now uh, all the time. Um, so uh, we'll continue to go through the process and, and, you know, get to the point where we have to make our decision on Thursday night. Just, I wanted to make clear that it's, the papers do Thursday, not Friday. Just, <laughs> just, just <laughs> that, that would be bad. Let me put that in my calendar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> one, one quick follow, kind of follow, along the lines of Philip's question. It, it's, I guess there is no absolute answer, and not getting into the nuances of player X versus player Y versus player Z versus whatever. But like, what what is the next seventy two hours like for you? I mean, you know, no matter what, if you keep the pick, you're going to draft a really good. Whichever direction you go, there's going to be an argument to be made to say this is why the magic went in that direction. So I guess at the, at the end of the day, what do you hone in on and identify as, okay, this is what we need the most, this is what we want right now? Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. And uh, if I had an easy answer, then we wouldn't have to meet for the next three days. Uh, someone once told me many, many, many years ago that if the draft were held one day earlier or one day later, it would be entirely different. And I believe that's true. So conversations happen, new information gets unveiled. Um, and to your question, obviously there are just so many things that go into this. It's, 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 it's talent, it's fit, it's you know, uh, 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 character, it's um, you know, the projection. Um, it's where the league is going. There's so many things that factor into a conversation like this that um, you can you can literally go on for months more arguing it, you know. And that's kind of like what makes it fun, right? I mean, it's been a fun process and getting to know guys and evaluate them and study them and look at our team through different lenses because of this pick. So, you know, that's part of what we're doing now. Go ahead, Shane. Uh, Jeff here in the back. Have you seen the movie Draft Day with Kevin Costner? Uh, I have not. He's the general manager of the Browns in the movie. Anyway, on draft day, he wrote down on a piece of paper the player's name, Joel Glass, no matter what. Well, is that the point? That, is that where you're trying to get on Thursday, or do you have to stay open all the way through to when, when the time comes? Yeah, no. I think it's our job to stay open, to stay open to all information, to stay open to... Um, um, new ideas, uh, to not kind of put your heels in um, too vigorously because there might be some other opinion that sways you. And, and this isn't about you know um, digging heels and this is about getting the right guy here. So uh, we actually had one of our guys actually um, reached out to a bunch of teams who had picked number one and asked them, you know, what were the pitfalls that you went through? And, you know, kind of, that was one of the things that, that came up was um, don't get married too quickly, which I thought was an interesting little nugget to your, to your question. Adam? Hey Jeff, to your right, Adam Shadow, Fox 35. Um, we know that you had Chad Holmgren in and we know you had Jabari Smith in. Have you had Paul Von Carolyn in yet? Um, Adam, you know, there's so much subterfuge going on and there's so much gamesmanship um, that I, I, I think that um, one of the things that we've done well and do well, and I'm really proud of our guys for, for being able to say this, is um, we are buttoned up. And I think it's really important to act that way. Um, so whatever the chatter is, whatever the rumors are, um, you know, I'll never 
get involved in that. Um, I'll tell you that we've had more players in than have been recorded, but um, I will not um, ever get into speaking about you know details or, or visits or, or this or that. And honestly, I think that serves a good purpose because not only I think is it, is it important for us to keep our information discreetly so that the players know that they can um, trust us, but it's also important when teams call because I do believe that we're a team that, that other teams know they can make, make discreet phone calls to and it won't get out. So the way that you manage information is a big part of this business, so you know, I'm not gonna comment on any of that kind of thing. So just a little follow up there. Uh, have, you, um, have you learned things about uh, the guys in, when you've had them in that you've had in that you had no idea about and how valuable were, was it when you had guys in? Um, you know, it's getting to know someone. So, you know, if you were um, hiring someone for your, you know, for in your job, you know, and, and you're bringing in some someone new to your to your company, um, and they spend time with you, you, you know, you get to know them. So you try to figure out how to make the most out of that time. Um, you know, it could be, you know, a meeting in Chicago. It could be a Zoom. It could be a visit. It could be a whole host of different, you know, ways to have contact points. And um, obviously, like we're just trying to find out um, at that point, you know, who 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 the person is, you know, because that matters a lot to us. Luke, hey Jeff, Luke Patrick, Spectrum yeah, Sports Three Hundred and Sixty. Um, I don't want to get a sneak peek of your board here unless you're willing to give it up. But how many players are you considering with that first pick? Uh, Sixty. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that. Um, uh, the conversation doesn't just stay on that pick because we have to be prepared to jump around. So I say that kind of in jest, but you, you understand what I'm saying. So, so um, we have to be prepared for conversations to become real and being able to act on those if so. Um, so it's not like we're just talking about the top you know, two or three guys, you know, however the, the mock draft boards have it. Just to follow up on that, mm -hmm. um, I know you said about turning in the assignment, you know, when it's due, but when do you want to have a decision made internally? Um, we won't have it made until it's time to make it, <laughs> honestly. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, Aaron Goldstone, Orlando, Pink Strike Close. Thanks for, for being with us, Jeff. Um, so much uh, attention about the first pick, but your team obviously has uh, picks 32 and 35 as well in the second round very mm -hmm. early. Um, how complicated does it get at this point in the process when you look at making those picks, you have to balance the age composition of your roster and, and availability of your roster and your board. Just how many moving parts are there when it comes to making those two picks? I mean, it's a great question, and I appreciate you kind of half answered it, you know, the way that you asked it. I appreciate that. It's very complicated, and obviously, you know, we don't want to spend 99% of our time on the top pick and, not, and disregard these other two picks, you know. So um, we're trying to always find the right balance of um, you know, how much um, uh, time equity we can pour into that. And obviously, because of the nature of those picks, there's probably more action there. You know, it's, 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 um, it's a unique talk that you have that gets serious about the number one pick, but you know, 32 and 35, there are a lot of talks going on. You know? And um, you bring up a lot of points that are relevant to the, to the answer, which is, um, how many rookies do we want this year? You know, we've got a young team already. How can we keep the pathway clear for our young players to develop? Um, so, you know, with that will come a whole bunch of explorations about what to do with those two picks. And you know, we're it's almost like uh, uh, you can you can just go on forever the if thens and play that out. We we could literally take all day every day um, just to just to deal with those. But obviously, we've got other you know important matters to, to deal with. But there, are, there is a lot uh, that goes into those conversations and, and you know, uh, I think we're, we're getting an understanding of how those picks line up with the rankings on our board. Um, getting back to Adam's question, it has to be, it's not just you know, the top few, it's you have to go all the way down through the draft. Um, and so uh, you know, that's where we are, but it's, 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 um, I feel like we're in a good place. We, we understand the motivations of teams. We're starting to get a, Kind of a semblance of how our board looks at different parts of the, uh, you know, where, where those picks would fall, and um, you know, we'll see where those conversations go in the next few days. Go ahead, Phil. 
uh, obviously during the during this process there was a, a, a loss in, in the front office with with Matt reportedly going to Minnesota how, how you know, you know. I know he said it. I think probably at one point that most of the work had already been done for the pre-draft prep. But how big of a loss was that as you're preparing to make this decision? Um, well, first, let me just say, you know, Matt Lloyd, man, we are so happy for Matt Lloyd. These are the kind of calls that you worked your career to get, and and Matt deserves it. You know, he's 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 been a great uh, um, servant to everyone here at the Magic, and and kind of. Uh, you know, lead, leadership through service, he's the ultimate um, embodiment of that. So really happy for Matt that he, he's been given this opportunity. I know he's gonna do great. Listen, we are going to handle this internally. We'll have more announcements to make over the summer, uh, exactly how that will look. But I'm excited because we have a lot of bright young talent that we work hard to develop. And, and so um, I think that we are going to um, um, probably re-examine a lot of the ways that we do things and maybe redistribute some of the um, work and uh, come out, um, I think, in a way that'll be um, hopefully even more productive. And so uh, I'm excited for Matt and I'm very excited for us. Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff, 30 presidents could probably answer this 30 different ways, but since you're the guy with the golden ticket, mm -hmm. how do you, when you go through this process, I guess, how do you balance, there's obviously an urgency to win now. I mean, everybody wants to win now, of course and you want to build it the right way, you want to build it for sustainable winning. So I guess how do all those factors kind of kind of weigh against one another? How you want to be good three years from now, good six years from now, but also you know good tomorrow too, right? And, and, and how does that all factor into the process? Yeah, that is such a great question. And when we talk about all the things that go into our draft conversations, you know, I mean, there's no component that's siloed. You know, I mean, everything affects everything else when you're looking at the, the roster construction and the draft and, and, and free agency and everything. And the, the 50,000 foot view that we try to take before we start to drill down on some of those is just what you, what you ask. So what are you trying to do? And I'll say this, I think you guys know that we didn't um, do all the, the uh, uh, roster deconstruction that we did and, and, and have gone through what we've gone through so that we can rush back to the middle. That's not what we're trying to do. That said, there are a whole lot of different permutations to that. And I would say that right now, we, we want to play better basketball. We want to make fewer mistakes. We want to increase our IQ. We want to build chemistry and continuity. Um, and we want to continue to understand which of our players are going to impact winning. And so um, that's a really relevant question. I would say it's the first filter for everything else that we look at. And um, we do want to get better, but not at the expense of rushing back to mediocrity. And we do want to um, have something sustainable. But then you get into, you have to elevate the standard to do that. You can't just stay at, at the basement level you know, interminably. So those are conversations that we're having. Who, who, which players do that for us? Um, obviously, part of this, you know, time is spent on our free agent board, and I'm not sure how aggressive we'll be or not. We'll see when the time comes. But um, you know, that's a that's a really great question, and it's a really important question. And I would say it's the first layer of everything that we look at. Go ahead, Luke. Uh, Jeff, just going back to this, last year when you were going through this process, you had just hired Jamal and he was putting his staff together at this time, so there was a lot of moving parts uh, with those two lottery picks. Now that you've had a full year with him and his staff, you know, what's the impact that has you know, on the decision and kind of the overall process for you? Yeah, um, I mean, I think Coach Mosley's done a great job. Um, I think his staff has done an amazing job, not just um, um, kind of growing together, you know, some knew each other, some didn't, but the way that they have integrated themselves into the lives of our players and the way that they have made our players success, their success, um, is really been fun to watch. And it's really a big part of what I'm so excited about right now, you know, that, 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 that we have this great spirit throughout our whole team. And I think that's one of the 
uh, real core elements of it. So, you know, I said last year, Moses was a rookie, you know, and we're a young team, we got a young coach. And, and I think he got better through the year and I sit there in his office now, we bounce things around and he's a different guy, you know, he's more experienced, understands kind of, you know, uh, what he's dealing with more. Um, um, you know, we're, um, we're, 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 I think, growing. And, and part of that just comes with time. So, you know, one of the things that we, that we really uh, benefited from with the last iteration of our team was just that continuity, you know? And when you do what we did, you have to kind of like start that over. And I feel like this summer, um, we're really starting to feel that everybody's been here a year, the families know one another, you know? And, and so it's just, it's really um, important. It's, it's the kind of glue, you know, that, that kind of like we build our summers on and we build our development on. So, you know, it's important, it's important factor. And I think, you know, Coach has done a great job and the whole staff has. Okay, we'll go final two, we'll go Kobe and then Adam. Touch on this a little bit, when talking about the second round picks. Have you been a little bit concerned about getting maybe too young with your roster, you know, having a first pick, but obviously, you know, two in the second round? I guess has there been also conversations about maybe consolidating those picks and trying to get into the back half of the first round? Yes, <laughs> uh, I think that that's a conversation that kind of, um, uh, goes hand in hand with Tim's, you know, is, is, you know, what are you trying to do? And we need to, um, we don't want to compromise our timeline. We don't want to compromise, you know, something that can be sustainable, but we also have to elevate standards and expectations. So, um, and the, the last part, which is kind of part of your question too, I think, Kobe, is I think it's important that when you do what we're trying to do right now, that the players feel that there's a pathway for them. So. Um, yeah, I, uh, uh, we do. We do pay attention to that. You know, how many, how many young guys can we get through the woods? How many can we? They're not all going to make it through, maybe, but they have to have a chance. And so um, we we do pay attention to that. Um, we are having discussions with teams. I mean, because we're a team that has two early second round picks, and those um, second round picks are treated different financially, to uh, in the salary cap, especially to tax teams kind of puts us in a position to have some conversations. Um, you know, that said, we've also, um, we're trying to develop a comfort level with where, where the players we like will go in the draft. And if we feel that, um, that we'll get a good uh, player with our second round picks, there's no reason to try to bop around. And then last one for me, Terrence Ross has made it clear early in the off season that you know, he would maybe like a different situation, maybe like to be somewhere else. What's the dialogue, what's the dialogue been like with him? You know, throughout the offseason, I guess, talking with him about what he wants or what he prefers. So, listen, T has been in this week, you know. Um, the thing about T is is he's, he's a true professional. He's a great guy. Um, I will say this. When we made all those trades last season, uh, T kind of got caught holding the bag, you know. And um, so we recognize that, and we've had discussions about that. And T loves the magic, he loves the locker room. I will say that part of the development of our young players, T can, T can um, uh, uh, claim some responsibility for that. He's helped shepherd some of our young guys through the last season. He's just a good teammate, a good professional, and um, obviously um, we'll be exploring options with our whole roster. Um, I will say that if, if Terrence Ross is on this team next year, um, I know that he's going to embrace the opportunity to um, grow the young guys up and show the league that he can still play. And uh, with that, you know, conversations are always ongoing league-wide. Go ahead, Jeff. So let's assume that you make the, the pick at number one. What, now that you've gone through everything and seen everybody, what would be your confidence level that you would be getting a guy who would be a huge positive addition to the team, a, a franchise-changing guy? Okay, that's two different questions right there. <laughs> I'll say this, you know, I never would put the pressure on anyone picking 15, eight or one that you're getting a franchise guy. I don't think that's fair to do to a guy who hasn't played a minute in the NBA yet. Um, I'm very confident that we're gonna get um, a player with size, talent, IQ, skill, character, um, everything that we want to be about. And we're going to add him to our already exciting group of young players. And um, we'll put him in a position to, for him to fully maximize his potential. And, you know, beyond that, it goes where it goes. You know, I, I think like, um, 
kind of predicting stars is a is a probably a, a fool's errand a little bit. I mean, I could mention a dozen guys that are NBA stars that you know no one would have dreamt of be, becoming that. Um, and I can flip it too, you know. So I just think that you know, you know me. I, I try not to label things too much, and um, we just want to draft someone who's going to really um, bring the characteristics that we're looking for and put them in, in the best possible position. Before we jump back in and talk a little bit about what Jeff Boltman had to say there, a quick word from our friends at Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So I endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do it yourselfers for more than 20 years. Their prices are reliably low for every customer and they have everything you could need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in there. How did you hear about us, box? So they know we sent you. Amazing selection. Reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. So, I, you know, I think, a, you know, Jeff Weltman, we know that he plays everything very, very close to the vest. Um, so it's not surprising that we, we did learn anything specific. It's, it's not surprising, again, he kind of went deeper into his philosophy about why the Magic don't publicize things, why, you know, when we say the Magic don't leak anything, they do not leak anything. Any leak you are hearing from around the league is usually couched as rival executives say, rival executives believe, it's not coming from the Magic. The Magic do not leak anything. Um, they're very buttoned up, and they think that is a, a selling point um, to for, to agents, to people around the league, that they understand that the Magic are going to keep your confidence. They're not going to uh, exploit information that you give them, uh, publicly at least. Um, they might do that privately or, or in negotiations with things. Um but I, I do think there are a few important things to take out from that. The first is the Magic are sticking to their process. Um, Jeff Fulman had several kind of funny aphorisms um, that you hear throughout throughout the league. Um, you know, again, I, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was funny when he said, "You know, you don't turn in a paper due Friday on Monday." Um, and, and, and I think that's really, really important. I, I say this all the time. If NBA front offices are mini intelligence agencies. They traded information. Um, and so they're, the Magic are not about to box themselves into a decision today knowing that something could develop on Wednesday or something could develop Thursday. Deadlines create movement. Deadlines create action. They create activity. Uh, and I think that Magic are right to kind of sit by and say, okay, we, we have a basic understanding of what we're thinking. You know, I think they'll, I think the, the, this week they really spend kind of gathering their information. I know people, I, I, I tweeted it out. People kind of criticized when Weltman said, you know, we're still very, it's hard to believe we're still kind of in the early stages. It's not that the Magic haven't done the research. It's not that the Magic haven't done all the inform- uh, done all the work. Now it's about consolidating it. Now it's about going through the process, going step by step through everything, kind of having conversations, thinking about different things, uh, and, and moving forward. I will say this though, and I think this is part of what's going on with the conversations around the league right now. You don't want to overthink it. Um, you, you know, you don't want to be married to someone. I, I do agree with that. I want you want to be open to new ideas, to new offers that come come to you, but you don't want to overthink it. You don't want to get stuck overthinking things. Sometimes you just need to make a decision, even if it's a decision just for that day. I know my mom would always tell me when I faced a big decision, um, sleep on it, sleep on it as if you're making one decision. See how you wake up in the morning. See how you feel with that de- with that being the decision, even if you're not fully committing to it yet. Obviously, the draft is not till Thursday. There's time. There are three days. They can live with picking Paolo. They can live with picking Chet. They can live with picking Jabari. Go through all the iterations and figure out which one fits best and then evaluate different offers that come in uh, in the process. Um, so I think the Magic are very much in their process and I think they're very much going to be focused and, and thinking about thinking about what they, what comes next for them, what, they, what they'll do next and, and, and how they'll develop from there. 
Um, it's it's obviously there is still a lot of moving pieces here. There's still a lot of things that can and are going to happen uh, for the Magic in the next couple of days. Um, so I, I I don't think we should I, I don't think the Magic should be committed to anything. The other thing that I thought was really really interesting, and I think it's really really important. It's something we may tease out a little bit later. I know I've talked a little bit about this. Jeff Feldman said they are conscious of how young this roster is and finding the right balance and making sure that any young player they draft has the runway to play, to contribute, to grow, that they're not just taking a draft pick because they have it, but that they are taking a draft pick uh, and then using it to help and then and then creating space on the roster for them to grow. I've talked about this a lot. The roster is pretty full. I don't expect the Magic to use both of their second-round picks for that reason. They need a veteran player. They need guys to kind of bolster uh, this group. And I think it was also really important that Weltman said, we don't want to be at in the basement forever. Like that was really a big thing that he said. It's not that the, it's not that you know. It, again, he said you know we're not going to rush ourselves back into mediocrity. We're not going to kind of hit our. We don't want our ceiling to be mediocrity. So we're not going to kind of push ourselves to get somewhere and then get stuck. But it, it's very very clear that there's a directive in this organization. There's a directive for this team to be better, to not be back in this spot. You know, unless they win the lottery, actually. Um, again next year. And I think that's really, really important. That's that's definitely a clue to what the Magic are thinking in this draft, or certainly what the Magic are thinking as they get into the offseason. Again, it's all about having an understanding of your goals and, and, and what you want to do. But at the end of the day, it's still about picking the best player. Uh, and like we've said, there are good arguments for several players to be that guy. The Magic are certainly going through all those arguments internally. The Magic are certainly trying to make that decision and make the best decision for them. It's not an easy thing to do. This is not an easy draft to do that. There are three really good players to pick from, plus a whole bunch more. Uh, Jaden Ivey of Purdue confirmed on the NBA's media call this afternoon, or Monday afternoon, that he worked out for the Magic. He only worked out for the Magic and the Pistons. So the Magic did their due diligence on a lot of guys. We do know the Magic worked out Shaden Sharp. It's been reported that the Magic worked out Keegan Murray. Um, you know, obviously Chet Holmgren was here. You know, we can assume that they did something with Paolo Bancaro, even if uh, there's been no confirmed rep- no confirmed workout or anything there. As Jeff Waltman said, they've worked out more players than have been reported um, out there. So there is a lot going on here. There's a lot to weigh. There's a lot to figure out. And yes, this process has been ongoing for a month, but the information gathering stage is done, or at least on the prospects, the information gathering stage is done. Now it's about figuring out how the draft is actually going to go. And as Weltman said, that changes day to day. You almost start from scratch on that every single day as new information comes in, as new conversations are had, as new meetings are had, as the Magic try to find the right argument and the right statement to make this ultimately super important pick. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore md. Find the podcast, uh, find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places on the podcast to your podcast-enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. We're finishing up draft profiles. There are a lot of draft profiles that we didn't get to on the podcast, so if you're looking for... Uh, someone the Magic might be interested in, check out orlandomagicdaily.com. Go through our archives. I'm sure you will find a prospect that fits your eye and that you will begin advocating vehemently for uh, in the second round as well, whether it's Christian Brown, whether it's uh, Jalen Williams, which will be up in the morning. No matter who it is, there, you know, uh, Khalifa Jop, there's, there's a lot of really interesting prospects in this draft. So definitely check out our prospect profiles. I'll be coming out with a new mock draft as well uh, in the coming days. I'm still working on that. Uh, and plenty more from Jeff Weltman's uh, press conference as well as we get perspective on what was said. If you're not already listening to it, be sure to check out the Locked On NBA Ultimate Mock Draft. Um, all of us here at the Locked On Podcast Network got together, did a full mock draft, including trades. It's going on over the next couple of days with uh, with Locked On uh, experts for their teams, as well as our Odyssey draft experts as well. Check them out. Check it out wherever you download podcasts, the Locked On NBA Ultimate Mock Draft. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.